Praise the Lord, EPC. Wednesday. Amen. Looking forward to a good word this evening. It says in Genesis 50 and 20, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass that it is this day to save much people alive. Are you thankful just for the presence of God? Are you thankful how he turns everything around, how he benefits you, blesses you, carries you? I mean, just think about all the obstacles that God removed from our path that we're not even aware of. Let's worship him. Praise God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. And uh, if you have a need, if you will let it be known by an uplifted hand, there'll be needs on the screens behind me. And uh, uh, I, I do know of, of uh, some that uh, have been, uh, that are battling sickness. And I want to say some, most of you by now may know, but Sister Iva Veal had an uh, uh, some kind of adverse reaction of some kind to something and is in the hospital but I saw her today and she's doing well so I thank God for that and thank you for your prayers I want to continue to pray for her and uh, let's just take our needs to the Lord right now shall we in Jesus name Lord we love you and thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together and to make our petitions known to you right now Lord, you see every hand raised here that represents a need tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, you know that need, and we're asking you to touch as only you can to do what no other can do. Lord, you see every need on the screen. I'm asking you right now, Lord, to touch Sister Iva Veal. I'm asking you, Lord, to, to touch these that, that are in special need of a healing touch. Hallelujah. Sister Betty Lamas is here right now. Could you all just stretch your hands this way, and let's pray for her right now. Lord, she needs a miracle in her body. She has several family members that are sick tonight. I'm asking you, Lord, to touch her. Thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you touch every request. You answer every need. Hallelujah. Folks, can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? Hallelujah. Lord, we know you've heard our prayers and our cries, and you're going to do what only you can do in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, you bless this offering that we are about to receive tonight. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone said amen. And God bless you. I'm going to let you be seated. And as you're being seated and preparing to give, I'm going to invite the ushers to come and to receive tonight's offering. And uh, I will just make you aware again, the, uh, uh, we have, of course, right now, uh, they'll, you'll hear more reports about this when they get back, but the junior Bible quizzing is wrapping up tonight and tomorrow. And uh, our teams have done very well. There's Again, there's probably about 40, 40 plus people from our church that are in Branson uh, right now tonight. And uh, they have had a good time. And uh, they have represented EPC very well. And there will be a group of them. Uh, not everybody will be coming home. There's going to be some of them that are going on to St. Louis for the, JB, for the Senior Bible Quizzing Nationals. And uh, uh, my wife and my, my, my kids are one of those. And I told my wife, so you're going to be careful. They're going to think you're not, you're not coming to church anymore. And so, and so all of that's happening, and then they'll be back on, on, uh, on next Wednesday. And uh, I fly out Sunday after church to go be with them to watch the Senior Bible Quizzers uh, quiz, and that will be very good. And uh, uh, you, will, uh, you will notice, uh, you, I don't know if he's going to be here Sunday, Brother Shane, you can shake your head yes or no, but they're going to be tuning the sound this week. But will they be doing that on Sunday, or will they be done by then? Okay, they'll be done by then, so you, so you won't notice anybody walking around. A few years ago when we had some work done during church on a Sunday, you saw a guy with a laptop and like a microphone thing walking around during the service, and they were tuning the system. And uh, they're, they're continuing to work on that, and I appreciate that that install is going well. And uh, I can't say enough about him, but I want to tell you, we need to all be very thankful for Brother Shane Ballard. And uh, he, uh, he has just been, when they do these kind of things and you bring a team into the building, you just need someone here that, that knows what needs to be done, that understands this, here to answer questions. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I may be pastor of this church, but I don't know jack squat about the sound system. And so anytime there's a question, I just point to that man back there and I say, you need to ask him. I don't know. You need to talk to Brother Shane. And uh, uh, that's the way I am about a lot of things around here. And uh, that's why I always am very clear to make sure you know this is a team-led effort. Amen. And uh, uh, I, I just I appreciate his attention to detail and his devotion to just making sure everything is as it should be. And we're very blessed because of that. Amen. Praise God. We're going to go into another time of worship. And, uh, and then... Uh, we have a very special guest speaker tonight. I'm excited to hear Brother William Withers is going to preach for us tonight. But let's go in. Let's, let's lift our hands and give God praise as Bishop takes us into another time of worship. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Well, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest, oh Lord. I give you thanks, well, thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest, oh Lord, I give you thanks. Let's do it one more time. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. If you'll all stand with me, amen, we're about to get ready for the word. I will say this coming week, 
on Thursday night and Friday night, a week from a week from this a week from tomorrow night, uh, August the fourth and fifth will be our North Texas District Summit. This is our district camp meeting that will be happening at the Plano Convention Center, and we highly encourage you. This is a rich time when all of our churches in North Texas gather together. And uh, we just, we come together for fellowship and, and incredible services. Brother Sam Emery is going to be preaching. And you are going to be blessed uh, if your schedule will allow you to get to come. I can tell you it's going to be well worth your time. Amen. And uh, it is crazy to think that we are uh, about to close out July and uh, with this coming Sunday. And then we're going to be into the month of August. So that's just hard to believe. But I'm so excited tonight. Uh, to have Brother Withers preaching for us. Brother and Sister Withers and their family came here a few months ago, and he is a licensed minister. He's a preacher of the gospel. And we had lunch together a few weeks ago, and I told him, I said, we've got to have you preach for us. Amen. So I want him to come. I want him to take his liberty. Would you just stretch your hands this way, and let's just pray for God's will to be done as his words deliver. Hallelujah. Let's just give that to God right now, Lord. We worship you, Jesus, and we magnify your name tonight, God. Have your way in the remainder of this service, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. You can go ahead and be seated. You know, it's always good to be in the house of the Lord. When it's 102 degrees outside and it's 70-something in here, it's even better. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just want to say real quick before I get started that... We've been coming here for, I don't know, it's been a couple months now, and you guys have made us feel like family. The kids love it. We love it. Uh, we just stepped right in here, and, and, and it's been awesome. Amen. So go ahead and turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 1 and 6. I just want to get right into this. I talked to pastor and asked him how long to go, and he said two hours. So... <laughs> so I'll keep it a little bit shorter than that. I know I, I got to work tomorrow. So Philippians 1 and 6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You can be seated tonight. Maybe about, I want to say it was close to about two years ago probably, I got this message from God. Don't shut me down. Sometimes you hear somebody say you got a message from God and they're like, okay. But this message itself was on a Chick-fil-A sign, so that's how I knew it was from God. I mean, if that's not God talking, then, then what is, right? Everybody likes Chick-fil-A, right? If you don't, I'm sure that God could still find a mansion for you. Somewhere in a corner, somewhere maybe. But anyway, the marquee on the Chick-fil-A sign, it said, don't give up, you're almost there. Don't give up, you're almost there. And when I seen this, this got the, the, the wheels turning in my head. And, and when you think about it, think about your walk with God, and he has started a good work in us. Amen? Amen. Like Philippians says, he started a good work in all of us. He started a good work in me. He started a good work in you. And if you're in this house tonight, if you're watching online tonight, then he started a good work in you. You didn't just magically show up in this place tonight. You didn't just, you walked in the room and all of a sudden, hey, it's EPC on there. You know, you, you tuned into that for a purpose. You had a desire for something. There was, you had a need. You had, there was something going on in your life that makes you want to be in this place, that makes you want to tune into this. You made that conscious decision to show up, and God has started a good work in you. Something's going on inside of you, and you can rest assured in the knowledge that what God has started in you, he's going to finish. He won't leave you unfinished. The verse I read in Philippians says, being confident. Knowing for sure of this very thing that he which begun a good work in you, in you, in you, in you, in me, and all of us, he's going to perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. That means that he's going to continue to work 
right? He's going to continue to perfect you, continue to make you into what he wants you to be, a vessel for him, until he comes back again. Essentially, you can hang a big, just under construction sign on you. Maybe get you a t-shirt that says, under construction. Wear it around. And it reminded me when I was doing, when I was preparing for this message, it reminded me of the song from Sunday school. Maybe some of you guys know it. But it says, he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth, Jupiter and Mars. But he's still working on me. That's the truth. He's still working on me. (laughs) The Bible shows us that Jesus was about 12 years old when his first recorded words were penned to paper. And then if you look in Luke chapter 2 and 49, you find the passage where Jesus has been separated from his parents. And when they find him in the temple, he tells them, he said, I must be about my father's business. And it's about 21 years later, we find in John chapter 19, his last recorded words when he was hanging on the cross, and he said, it is finished. This is a prime example of God finishing what he started. He had a mission when he came here, amen? And that was to do his father's business, and he completed it. He gave himself on the cross for our sins as the ultimate sacrifice, and he rose again on the third day. What God begins... He finishes. Jesus said something very important to our walk with him in the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 9 and 62, he said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's that's a strong verse. And once you get started on this path, don't give up. Don't look back. There's nothing that you gave up to serve God worth going to hell over. There's no habit, no friendship, no, it doesn't matter what it is that you had to give up to serve God. It's not worth going to hell over. And like that sign said on Chick-fil-A, you know, don't give up now. Now that you've started this, don't give up. Don't look back. The, you've, if you've been in this for any period of time, then you've heard that the race isn't to the swiftest, right? The race isn't to the fastest. We know that the battle doesn't always go to the strongest. But in the book of Matthew, it says that he that endureth to the end. He that endureth to the end will be saved. The one who keeps pushing, the one who keeps running, who keeps fighting, who doesn't give up. He's the one that's going to be saved. Hebrews 12 tells us to lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. It tells us to run with patience. Run with patience the race that's before us to keep going, to keep moving. Don't stop. One step at a time. Sometimes sometimes it's going to be a run. Sometimes it's going to be a walk. Sometimes it's going to be a crawl. It's not always going to be easy. But it's the one that keeps on going, that keeps pushing one step at a time. You know, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He knows. He knows what we're going through. In Jeremiah chapter 18, God was talking to Jeremiah, and he told him to go down to the potter's house and and to watch him work. And so Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house to watch the potter do his work. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 3 through 6, Jeremiah said, I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. There was something wrong with it. It had had marks on it. It was scarred. So, so the potter took it up again, and he made another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make. In verse 5, then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Can I take you and make something out of you, even though you're marred, even though you're broken, even though something is going on inside of you? Can I take you up and make you a vessel like this potter does? Because behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand. And that's us tonight. We're just clay in the potter's hands. You know, sometimes life does get hard. It does get tough. Paul said that, you know, we suffer light afflictions. And it's just momentary. And sometimes, sometimes that's God working on us. Sometimes that's God perfecting us. 
those afflictions that we go through. He's trying to make us what he wants us to be. And in other times, we get cracked, we get bruised, we fall, we slip up, we stumble, we act retarded. You know, we do dumb stuff because we're human. But you know what God does? He reaches down and he picks us up and he puts us back on that potter's wheel and he goes back to work on us. He goes back to making us back into that vessel that he wants us to be. No, why would God do that? Why would he do that? First Peter 2 and 9 tells us, he says that we are a chosen generation, that we are a royal priesthood, that we're a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness, amen, and into his marvelous light. You're not something that's just to be discarded just because you made a mistake, just because you got a, a mar on you, you got a mark on you. You're not something to be just thrown out that you think is broken and that you think is good for nothing. No, you're a chosen people. Amen? You're, you're royal. You got royal blood flowing through your veins, and God has chosen you for a purpose. And because he chose you, he'll take you in his hands. And he'll shape you and he'll form you into that vessel that he wants you to be. But he'll only do it if you allow him to. A few years ago, me and my family were uh, following this channel on YouTube. And it was called Flight Test. And what they would do is they would build these uh, radio-controlled airplanes. And they built them from scratch and after they would build one, build one, they would take it out and they would test fly it, hence the name test flight. And most of the time, these planes, they wouldn't fly right the first time out of the box. The plane would crash. There would be something wrong with the wings. It'd go into a barrel roll and into the ground it would go. And, and sometimes they would have to take that plane and they would have to build it three or four times that might be a small modification. Other times they would have to do a complete rebuild of these radio-controlled airplanes. But they would continue to work on the plane until it flew how they had envisioned it. And through this trial and error, many times the plane would crash again. It would keep crashing. Stuff would keep happening with it. But they would take it and they would tweak it a little bit. They'd do something else to it. Sometimes the plane, it would look mangled. You know, they'd be dragging it off the field, and you're like, there's no way they're ever going to put that thing back together. But they would take it, and they would put it back together. And, you know, they would take it to their workshop. Sometimes it would take them a few hours, and they'd be back out there. Other times it would be a day. I think one time there was a week they had to work on this plane before they were able to get it back out in the air. But they would bring it back out there after they put it back together. They would toss it in the air, and then all of a sudden you just see it take off. And it's just soaring. And it would fly, and it would fly better, obviously, than when they had first put it together. And, and you could see the joy on the maker's face whenever this would happen. Our lives can be like that sometimes. You know, Jesus, he's working on us. And we get out in the world, we get out at work, the grocery store, or wherever, our test flight, so to speak. Everything seems to be going good. We're soaring along, everything's going good. And then all of a sudden, boom, right into the ground. We mess up, we screw up, and it seems like we can never be put back together again. That we're too broken, that, that we carry too much baggage, that we can never walk like God wants us to walk, right? We could we could never be what God wants us to be. But if we get back up again, if we allow Jesus to pick us up, drag us off the field, back to his workshop, back to the potter's wheel, allow him to start working on us again. Maybe it'll take days. Maybe it'll take weeks. Maybe you keep fighting that same thing. But if we allow him to do the work that he wants to do and allow him to work on our lives. It'd be like what Job said, that we'll come forth shining like gold. We'll take back to the skies and we'll soar again. You know, we may walk away from that with scars. We may have brokenness. That's life. But you'll be holy in Christ. 
Amen. Why? Why? Because, again, we're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood, and he's the potter, and we're the clay. So let me tell you tonight, just hang on. Don't give up. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows what you're going through. Keep fighting. Keep pushing. Keep walking. Keep crawling if you have to, but don't stop. Don't stop. I want you to look at Isaiah 41 and 10. God said here, he said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He said, I am with thee. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I'll hold, the, I'll hold you up. These are promises that God has for his chosen people. You know, God's not a liar. Amen. The Bible tells us that he's not a liar. He's not slack concerning his promises. And he's willing that, you know, that we all come to repentance. And the Apostle Paul, he said that, it said that he ran his race. He is, let's see, in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. He kept pushing. He kept walking, running, whatever he needed to do. And if we go back and we look at Paul's life, he didn't exactly have it easy. Amen. Besides the fact that he had to live with the knowledge that he was responsible for tracking down Christians and throwing them in jail and all kinds of stuff like that before his conversion. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 that he'd been in prison, beatings above measure, often in death's grasp. 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 27, he said, of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I spent in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, his own countrymen, his own people, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. I think you're kind of getting the point here. Paul didn't exactly have it easy during his walk. Amen. He said, in weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold, in nakedness. All of this stuff that Paul went through, and yet he never gave up. He never quit running the race. He never lost hope. In Romans chapter 5, Paul said that he gloried in the tribulations because he knew that the tribulation was working on him. Amen. It was making him. It was making him better. It was molding him like the potter with the clay. It was refining him. Romans 5, 1 through 4, he said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by, ho by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only rejoicing in hope of the glory of God, but in verse 3, listen to this. He said, not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation worketh peace or patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. That hope that he's talking about right there, that hope that we have, that's the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 1 and 13 says that we're sealed with that promise. When we receive the Holy Ghost, we're sealed with the promise. And that promise, the Holy Ghost, again, that, that's available for us today. That's available for us tonight. Even on a Wednesday night Bible study, it's available for you. On a Thursday night at home by yourself, it's available to you. It doesn't matter where you're at. You can get the Holy Ghost anywhere. And if you don't have it and you have been seeking it, keep going. Keep pushing. You're going to get it. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 13, or 10 and 23 says to hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he's faithful that promised. It says to hold fast. Hold on to that. That means hang on. Don't give up because God is faithful. In Romans chapter 4, Paul wrote that Abraham was fully persuaded that God would perform what he had promised. When you go to read this, it says that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God, 
through unbelief. He was steady. He knew it. He had it fixed in his mind. He staggered not at the promise. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It says that he was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Fully persuaded. That's what I need to be. <laughs> I need that. I need to be fully persuaded that what God has promised, he's going to bring to pass. Get that same mindset, that same mentality. It doesn't matter what comes up against me. I'm fully persuaded. I've got no doubt in my mind that God's going to see me through. In Psalms 41, David said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. God hears us when we cry out to him. And he's more than able to take care of us in our time of need. In 1 Kings Chapter 19, and I don't actually have the scriptures here for the sake of time, but we find Elijah running from Queen Jezebel, and he had just killed all the priests of Baal, and now Jezebel wants to kill him. First uh, Kings chapter 19, and what happens here is Ahab tells Jezebel about how Elijah had killed all her prophets, so Jezebel sends Elijah a message it says, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. Though in verse 3, it says that Elijah heard the message. And what did he do? He got up and he ran for his life. He ran away scared. You know, God had just given him victory over 850 false priests. Killed them all. God gave him victory over 850 of these guys. And now he's running for his life because of one single person said that they were going to kill him. And it gets so bad that when you go on to read it in verse 4, Elijah tells God, why don't you just kill me? You know, just kill me. I'm good for nothing. I'm no better than my father's. Just take my life. You know, can't we all be like that sometimes? God will give us a big victory in our life. We overcome, overcome this massive thing. And then all of a sudden we get a bill or something in the mail that you didn't expect. And you're like, oh, God. How am I going to do this? What, what are we going to do? Or something else happens and, and you lose hope just like that. Right after a big victory. Throw in the towel. No hope. But there is hope. You know, don't give up now. Hang on because victory is coming. Deliverance is coming. In verse 5 of chapter 19, it says that he fell asleep under a tree and an angel came to him and said, arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was, there was food there on the coals, and there was water there, and he ate and he drank. And then he laid down and he went to sleep again. And then the angel come and woke him up again and said, Arise and eat. And listen to this part. I actually I should have put this verse up here, but I didn't. He said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. Get up and eat, because the journey is too great for you. What you're about to go through, what you're going through, it's too great for you. You can't do it on your own. And God knew what Elijah was fixing to go through. He knew what Elijah still had to face. And he said, eat what I've given you right now because the journey is too great for you. You know, this wasn't your ordinary filet mignon and loaded mashed potatoes that he was eating. This was, this was meat from God. And in verse 8 it says, and he arose and did eat and drink. And he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights. That food carried him through the rest of his trial that he was having at that time. God knows what you have need of even before you ask it or before you think it. And he will make a way. He'll carry you through. Get what you can from God today, and it'll carry you through that next period that you're fixing to go through. How many here tonight have seen the first photos that came from the James Webb space telescope, the pictures that they had found deep in the space. If that picture works, could you put that picture up there? I know some of you guys probably have seen this on the internet or different places like that, but there's more and more pictures that are coming out from this, and, and these pictures, you know, they're amazing. They're breathtaking. Uh, to me, to my mind, my uneducated mind, it looks like Photoshop. You know, it's hard to believe that that stuff is really out there. But galaxies upon galaxies, each with billions of stars in them. And, and 
the pictures that we've seen, these are just small parts of what's out there. And this picture here I pulled from the NASA website, and it said that if you hold your hand out like this with a grain of sand, that's about how big that picture is. And in this picture, it says that there was um, a thousand galaxies with the billion stars in them. I mean, that's pretty crazy when you think about it. And yet, among all the beauty and the wonder of everything that this telescope is showing us, there's over 500,000 words written in our Bible, and God only fit to mention it as stars, right? And some translations of the Bible, it renders it down to, and he made the stars also, almost as an afterthought. And, and when I read that article, it, it made me think of Psalms chapter 8, verses three, to nine, 3 through 9. And it says, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you would come and you would die on a cross for me? It goes on to say, in the son of man that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with the glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. And then verse 9, it says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Let me tell you tonight, we serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. And who am I that he would love me, that he would pull me out of darkness? Amen. He's an on-time God. And just when you feel like giving up, he'll give you the strength that you need to face that day. In fact, it says that in Deuteronomy, as your days are, so shall your strength be. You got to put your trust in him and allow him to give you the strength for every day. God is with you, and he'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Hebrews 11 says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know, and that's the key right there. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Those who put him first and foremost in their lives. And if you do that, you know, by faith, God's going to take those callings in your life. He's going to take your life, and he's going to bless you, and he's going to reward you if you continue to seek him, continue to push, continue to walk, continue to keep going forward. Scripture after scripture gives us hope that God is with us. And in 2 Corinthians, it tells us that we are the temple of the living God and that God wants to dwell in us and he wants, he wants to walk with us. You know, he wants to make us his people. And again, it's because we're a chosen people a royal priesthood. We've been brought out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So hang on. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. Keep pushing forward. And I'm winding down here, but I want to leave you with this story. I read this a few days ago during a devotional, but it says that Nick Stevens and his sister Ligon loved to climb mountains. They were both experienced climbers. They had uh, summited the Denali Mountains in Alaska, which is the highest point in North America, as well as many of the mountains in South America. But in January of 2008, they were swept off a of Colorado mountain by an avalanche, and it injured Nick, but unfortunately, it killed his 20-year-old sister. And of course, as you can imagine, Nick was devastated by his sister's death but later he discovered a journal and he was deeply comforted by what she had written in this journal. Let me, I just want to read an excerpt of what she wrote. She wrote, I am a work of art signed by God, but he's not done. In fact, he's just begun. I have on me the fingerprint of God and I have a job to do in this life that no other can do. And that's true for all of us tonight. We're works of art made by God. His fingerprints are on our lives. 
In the book of Luke, it says that he even knows the very number of hairs on our head. You know, he created everything. He knows the beginning from the ending, and yet, and yet he loves us. He loves us enough to know us. Do you know how awesome that is? That the creator of this world, that the creator of this universe loves us enough to know us, to hear our prayers, loves us enough to forgive us when we fell over and over and over, loves us enough to call us out of darkness, to use us for his glory. If we could all stand tonight. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31 says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then several verses in Psalm says, the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? And it goes on to say that he's my refuge. He's my strength. He's my very help in the time of trouble. He's our fortress, our high tower. He's the shelter in the time of storm. He's our shield and buckler in the time of battle. He's the rock of our salvation. Yeah, he's greater than the greatest and higher than the highest. He's the great physician if you're sick tonight. He's the great I am, the provider in our hour of need. A light in the middle of darkness. He protects us. He gives us wisdom. We serve an awesome God tonight. And I want to leave you with this. Don't give up. Don't give up. You can make it. Don't give in. Keep pushing forward. God is still working on you. He hasn't given up on you yet. He still wants to make something out of you. He still wants to use you. He hasn't quit. He hasn't thrown you aside. You're precious in his sight. He's just getting started with you, with all of us. Lord, we worship you right now. We magnify your name. Lord, help us to understand and to realize that you are still working on us, that you still want to do something with us, that we're not useless, that you can take us and you can make us and you can mold us into what you want us to be, Jesus. We praise you and we magnify your name, God. Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Withers, for an excellent word. I was looking at his opening text, Philippians 1 and 6. Paul says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
Paul was writing this from prison. And when you read it before, he, he, he talks, he just, he, he's just talking to, uh, to all the saints of, church, of the church. He's being a pastor. He's, being, he, he's pastoring those people that he loves so much. And he knows they've gone through tough times. I mean, he's in prison writing this. And I told Brother Withers, you know what's amazing is what he was doing when he was putting pen to paper, he was doing the exact same thing 2,000 years ago that you were doing tonight is a preacher standing up and just reminding all of you, no matter what's going on in your life, don't give up. You've made the right choice. Choosing to live righteously, choosing to live a, leave a life of sin, to live for God, don't give up. Hallelujah. You're going to make it. Hallelujah. He's going to complete the work in you. Hallelujah. You keep the faith. Hallelujah. And then every scripture he read in the Old Testament, Isaiah, it's amazing how God always had a voice that would stand before his people and remind them, you stay steadfast in what I've told you to do. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give up. Hallelujah. What a word. Thank you, Brother Withers. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Can you one more time just... Lift your hands and let's just give God praise tonight. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to tell you, if you haven't gotten to know the Withers family, this is a family worth getting to know. He and his sweet wife and their kids. One thing I noticed real quickly when they started coming in is their kids just plugged in like they'd always been here. Amen. And I'm thankful for what God is doing. Of course, we saw several, uh, not several, just a few weeks ago, he baptized his daughter. And uh, I'm thankful that they are a part of this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. And I don't want anybody to be offended, but I'm going to let you go a little early tonight. So if you can forgive me for that, I'll let you be dismissed if you promise to leave in a good spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Greet the withers. Love one another. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're going to gather on Sunday, and it's going to be a great time of worship. Hallelujah. I pray God bless you the rest of this week.